you know, the most frustrating thing is how, how much of an idiot I feel like. And, and what I mean about an idiot is even though I started noticing what he was doing because he treated me nice, I'm like, I was still like something, something just doesn't jive, but he's just a con man. He's a con man. You can keep that in there. I told him <laughs> at the lawyers that I told him at the lawyers and my, you know, the gloves are off that um, I am. Anybody who's got anything to say, questions, I will answer everything 100% truthfully. I told him <laughs> in his face. So he can come back at me with that one all he wants. He, I told him that in front of my lawyer when he did that <laughs> whole signing. Nice. When he did that uh, that signing paper at the at the diner. Mm. Um, you know, I, I looked at the timeline of that. I was like, wow, I was the last guy he asked. Like the last stronghold, if you look at the dates. Oh, yeah. And and after almost three hours at that diner, he literally said, look, I'm so sorry that you got involved and stuff. Only the lawyers will see this. This is just to keep you out. And nobody will see this. <clears throat> but that he will change that line for me. I didn't feel right. I said, all right, you know, it's been plenty of hours and I signed it, man, just over 24 hours later, my phone blew up. They put that thing on the second page of the evidence package. It's like, we got it. We got it. The last stronghold. And uh, that morning I rushed straight to my lawyer. Mm. We changed, we had that line change. We made an agreement, but I told them I'm not holding out anything. I had people that would ask me questions and I would share a little, but I would say off the record, like don't say my name. But after that, man, I called everybody. I go, hey, whatever I told you off the record, put my name on it. And I told them. I was just so upset. I was really surprised. I remember that day. I couldn't believe you signed it either, but. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it wasn't yeah, even the position. They manipulate, they, you know. It's whatever it takes, literally. But it was it was kind of like, now I think about it, it's like if he said, you know what, let me just tell him what he wants to hear. At the end, I'll deny it all anyways. He'll deny it all. And I remember he said, well, I, got, I have recording from the diner. I said, perfect. Release it. Release it. I know it was a bluff, but I wanted him to release it you can literally see him him and his wife and us for three hours three on hours the, on the speaker phone right oh oh his son on the speaker phone for about three-fourths of it but um he, he was just showing me all these people that had signed papers saying you know a possibility he's like come on man look at these papers come on man you can't say you're 100 percent sure i'm like i'm 100 percent sure I thought I'm a hundred percent sure. And one part I even said, come on, man. I I said, Billy, I I did it in my house on a main computer that I set up and I was able to duplicate your look. All right. Come on. You know, and I didn't even release that. I said, I'm just gonna stick to the arcade to help you. And uh, and his story started changing. But if you want to look at that video that he doesn't have. It's literally out of the three hours we ate for 20 minutes and then the rest of it, we're literally looking at this piece of paper he wanted me to sign for two hours, two hours. Him like him and his wife trying like a sales pitch. And finally I'm like, whatever, all right, if you're gonna change it and no one's gonna see it, no problem. Boy, he showed that to everybody. They put that on like the second page of the evidence package mm -hmm. while all the signature papers were in the back. I was like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But on to you guys. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get rolling for real. Uh, hello, my name is Walter, uh, Ursat's Cats Online. And today I've got a crew of people looking to talk about the uh, current uh, Billy Mitchell Twin Galaxies lawsuits, both the. Uh, original Billy lawsuit against Twin Galaxies and now the countersuit. Uh, first, let's start with uh, introductions. Let's see. 
Uh, we'll get to all that stuff in, the, in a moment. Uh, first, uh, tell us a bit about yourself, everyone. Let's start with uh, Steve. What's up, guys? Steven Kleisath. I'm in Pompano Beach, Florida. Um, you know, obviously, I've been, <clears throat> unfortunately, in some ways involved with the situation for the, or at least in the know about it for the last few years since 2018. But um, you know, been part of the classic arcade community for a while. Uh, hold the current world record in Mario Brothers arcade platform. Uh, all the variations there, and uh, you know, in in the positive, I've met a lot of great people, like the following gentlemen, um, throughout the course of the last several years, as a result of the community and our, you know, as far as me and David goes, our love of certain classic arcade titles. And, and as far as Carlos, uh, getting to befriend him at the beginning of the, uh, our involvement, I guess you could say in the dispute process, uh, which was initially to defend and exonerate uh, Bill in uh, February of 2018. But you know, otherwise, um, you know, good to see you finally, Walter. And uh, yeah, ready to roll. You know, whatever uh, questions you have, fire away. Yeah, how about um, Carlos, uh, introduce yourself. Hey everybody, my name is Carlos Pinedo. And uh, I got involved with this thing by chance. It just happens to be, I was a game tech many, many years ago. And uh, I met, I didn't meet Billy. I met his friend, Robert Childs because I had a whole bunch of game boards I decided I was gonna throw away uh, one day. And I said, you know what, let me, let me do one last chance to see if I can find a buyer. And I found the arcade game sales. I went over there, I made them a deal. Childs bought, his, uh, bought my boards and, uh, and uh, never really spoke to him much, but I liked his shop. And that's how I got involved in it. One day I saw a, a post by Robert Childs about a, a game converter, which is now the famous two-bit converter. And I read it, I replied to it, man, next morning I got a lot of calls and messages, especially from Steve asking uh, if uh, I wanted to look into this thing. Went by and I said, yeah, how long can it take? <laughs> you know, I didn't think it'll take long. And I had not met Billy, I really didn't know who he was. And then when I saw him, I go, man, I've seen him somewhere. And it was, of course, from like video game documentaries or something. And that's how I got involved. And I honestly thought it would be like maybe a one week thing. I'm like, oh, this is going to be quick. But um, it was not. And interestingly, um, I've fallen in love with the community. I like the people. I've been to events. I am not a video game high score holder. But I have met a lot, a lot of good people. And um, I just got stuck in it got stuck in this investigation by accident but that's my story and uh, unfortunately after all the work i was doing i'm like there's something off here and when i came to the conclusion i was like yikes and i released it and uh i think like two or three days after i released my findings uh billy mitchell lost all his scores and um i felt bad about that because i liked the guy but I was, I was asked to say the truth, and that was the truth. But now uh, they're trying to change the story on me and stuff. But that's my introduction. That's how I got involved with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and real quick, Walter. Like again, I, I date back eight years being friends with Robert and Bill. Very good friends with Robert Childs, and you know, friends with Bill to the point where we worked together on an event I hosted every month or every other month at Robert Child's shop, which is Arcade Game Sales in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, you know, I hosted it, advertised it, Robert facilitated it. Billy showed up as kind of like the figurehead, roaming around, taking pictures with people, hanging out, that kind of thing. And so that dates back all the way to 2011 um, is when I first, uh, I bought a machine off of Robert, a, a Miss Pac-Man machine. And um, wasn't the greatest deal, but you know, I, I really wanted a, 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 a dedicated cabinet as they call it at that point and i was started you know get back into playing some of the classic arcade titles that uh i had kind of gone away from for some years but yeah i met robert that way and then we we got to the point where we were doing this event on a pretty pseudo regular basis 
Uh, you know, I'd see Bill and Robert all the time, periodically, usually once or twice a week. I'd go by the shop in between transportation jobs and play some games, shoot the shit, you know, talk about stocks. You know, Robert does day trading. You know, he does a lot of different things. And of course, he has this business with arcade game sales. But, uh, you know, like I said, I, I knew them both really well for eight years leading up to this dispute that materialized. And uh, I just wanted to add that in too, as far as my historical perspective or uh, timeline, if you will, with the leading up to the situation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, you, David, uh, uh, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got involved with all this. Well, uh, my name is David Race. Uh, I've been and I guess you could say an uh, arcade enthusiast since uh, the early 80s. You know, uh, Pac-Man was always my favorite game. Uh, eventually, it came to the point in 2009 that I uh, uh, did a perfect Pac-Man and then became the fastest perfect Pac-Man. Uh, and I still hold that record to today. Uh, I'm also what you could call a... Uh, uh, someone who is interested in like Christian apologetics. I remember one of the first times I uh, interacted with Steve, I think it was in 2011. Uh, I know he had, he had actually mentioned that uh, they were having an event for arcade game sales. Uh, and uh, I think that's probably, I don't know if it was early or maybe like late for uh, 2011. So I first got messages from Steve. And then I saw that, you know, he was interested in trying to do the Miss Pac-Man Turbo, and then he was going to go for Mario Brothers and things like that. And then, uh, you know, we had kind of like uh, interactions and stuff like that. And then the beginning of uh, 2018, uh, February, I started seeing things show up that uh, Billy Mitchell scores were called into question. I started to post uh, things that I thought you know, about the situation I thought were, were wrong, you know, people were making assumptions. Uh, and then uh, shortly after that, in February, I was actually contacted by certain in the, the, the gaming community or those who were supporting Billy Mitchell saying that Billy wanted to talk with me. And so uh, I did respond and I called Billy and then we've had interactions since then. And uh, the whole process I thought initially was a sham, that it was a joke that a lot of the things in the Twin Galaxies forums, let's say, was a, an act of poisoning the well. I was certainly not, you know, uh, uh, against Billy. I was doing all that I could to defend him early on. And then uh, <laughs> eventually I had uh, gained access to uh, Billy Mitchell's uh, Donkey Kong boards that he said that he played uh, for the disputed scores. And then a period of like a month and a half, couple months or whatever it was, I came to the conclusion that whatever it was, the, uh, the results had to have been from something other than what they were claiming. They claimed that they had used a two-bit score converter that Carlos referenced. And uh, the orientation of, this, of the boards that were coming from Billy's hardware didn't match. Uh, it certainly didn't match uh, what we see in the King of Kong. And so basically I left it open with an inconclusive uh, status. And it's like, whatever it is, it certainly was not as they were claiming it was. Uh, and then my uh, view began to change. That was in September of 2018. Uh, September 2nd, I submitted uh, my initial assessment to Gary Byram of the uh, uh, International Video Game Hall of Fame. And uh, a few months after that, I was contacted again by Billy and it was kind of like, I thought the thing was pretty much over, you know, and uh, I still held to an inconclusive position. And then they were trying to say that we got all this other kind of things and we we're looking at game analysis and things like that. Uh, I was the one of the people that thought that uh, the games that we saw on the videos uh, could have been manipulated or could have been edited by a third party, uh, such as Dwayne Richard. Uh, and uh, I didn't think this was an insurmountable thing, uh, but new evidence came to light uh, later in that year of 2019, where I discovered that uh, the master tape, the original tape that uh, they said they didn't have, actually showed these elements, these uh, certain things that we find in 
the disputed tape, such as the uh, the signature of the you know the uh, the girder finger, and that kind of like opened the door. You know, it's not necessarily right away the floodgates, but it opened, you know, like a little hole a bit at a time where things started coming in. And I said, there's no way this could have been this way. So, but anyway, that's me. That's kind of like my introduction into this. And, uh, you know, I guess you can go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, um, I believe, Steve, you probably got like involved, actively involved in the dispute stuff before the other two. Uh, tell us about how you, how you like, do you recall how you first heard about the dispute and how you first started, uh, working on, uh, I mean, obviously all three, all three of you entered on the belief that, well, I've known Bill for years. He must be, he's got to be innocent, you know? Um, uh, do you recall the first uh, time you really heard about the dispute, Steve? Yeah, I think I saw the Donkey Kong forum post of it because it, it was the dispute by Jeremy Young, um, initially that he submitted between galaxies. I started kind of hearing rumblings about it on some of the like the DKF Donkey Kong forum and and uh, I remember uh, sending Robert some Facebook messages and like you, you guys realize that there's a dispute going on with Bill's DK scores and at that point you know wanted up talking with Bill. Okay, hold on one second. I'm getting the run now. We move, move. I got the same thing. <laughs> well, I just got a message from Zoom. It, typically, it's only 40 minutes. I think. If it's more mm -hmm. than three people, but they've removed it, and that was the message they were giving me, so that's good. So we have more time. Um, so initially, I, I was seeing posts about it. I, I know I have Facebook messages where I message Walter, "Have you seen this?" You know, like that kind of thing. And then, uh, you know, finally got to the point where we were all at the shop and obviously talking about it. And obviously, I, my mindset at that point was exactly like, "Well, this has to be a bunch of you know conspiracy theory, or I don't know, just like I." Obviously, at that point, the, the furthest thing from my mind was that, you know, the polar opposite of what, what it actually was. So, you know, at that point is when uh, it led to Robert making that post. And basically that post that Carlos replied to on Facebook was how a two-bit converter works, I believe. So Robert was kind of breaking down, this is how the equipment works. This is why this is authentic kind of thing. And then, you know, it caught Carlos's eye, of course. And he made a reply. And I think he may have made a mention that he used to work for Sega as a game board technician. And when I saw that reply, I was like, because remember, I'm in help Bill and Robert mode here. They're my friends. And I was like, oh, wow, this guy could be a great asset from the technical standpoint to kind of, uh, you know, address this dispute and figure out, you know, what's wrong about it or, you know, what's, you know, what is this guy claiming and what's the truth of the matter? like in, on behalf of Bill and Robert that would exonerate him and, and prove that these scores were legitimate. And so, yeah, I reached out to Carlos. I was like, you seem pretty well versed in this kind of stuff, like the, especially the, the equipment. And then that, yeah, that piqued his curiosity and I wound up uh, setting up a meeting eventually with me, him, Bill and Robert at Arcade Game Sales. And at that point, it was basically gonna be where they, they presented they told us they had the original equipment that they recorded those games on, and they gave us full access, me and Carlos. You know, I was managing it more and just kind of assisting, being there as support. And Carlos was privy, we're both privy to the two-bit converter, the capture card, the arcade cabinet, all the equipment they said they used to record direct feed those three games. Uh, Carlos had access to basically recreate the direct feed setup and just test the equipment in general, typically why I would play Donkey Kong. And then that would correlate with Bill coming in and playing on the machine. I think Carlos actually recently found some video actually where you could actually see all of us. You could see Bill playing, oddly enough, not in his suit, which I think is pretty rare. Ooh, and then, interesting. Me, what's that? Interesting. Yeah, me right next to Bill. And then Carlos from the back of the machine. And we're all just talking, you know, verbiage. And, you know, again, we set up shop in arcade game sales on the main showroom floor from about probably the end of February, I'd say, until the beginning of April, probably six weeks, where I would say maybe Carlos could uh, add to that, had to be at least two or three days a week. 
maybe more that we would go in. You know, typically it was during work hours, which I know later on Robert kind of started to not want that to happen anymore because he felt it was distracting his workers and stuff too much. So initially it was during work hours right on the showroom floor. All the equipment was there for me and Carlos to walk in whenever we wanted to and work on it. And then eventually it got to like after hours, after business hours, I think, toward the latter stages of the uh, our participation in the process. So there's a little timeline. Of well, yeah. And Carlos, you already kind of went into um, how you got how you first got involved, but did you have anything to add or any more detail to uh, your first meeting with uh, Billy and Robert? Oh yeah, um, Steve was friends with uh, with Charles and Billy for many many years. I was actually the new guy who uh, who came in and just you know I volunteered my work. The truth is that I had not worked on that kind of equipment in so long that I really said, oh, this is going to be fun. That was in my head like, oh, you know, it brought back some old memories because I don't work on game boards for years. And I'm like, ah, oh, this this will be cake and I'm going to be able to work in a shop again for free. I thought it was going to be fun. And boy, was I wrong. So I was really the, the new guy in the group. But um, uh, truth be told, uh, we were, we, when I say we, it's me and Steve. Uh, they, they gave us a story. I believed Billy. I believed Billy's defense. I believed every, Billy had an answer for everything that would be thrown at us on the forums. To the point where I said, you know what, I'm going to stop reading the forums. Steve will give me like the cliff notes of what he's found out. Just so I'm up to date. I'm just going to focus on the equipment. I'll work on that. And uh, Steve was really my, like my scheduler. He would call in the morning. He was like, hey, uh, the, um, Robert says we can come in today. And we would spend hours, hours on that stuff. And a lot of the recordings and work I did, I would take home and continue on there. But um, we were told this was the original equipment. They borrowed the cabinet because it had been years um, since he had done a world record. But they brought the original cabinet for one of the games or two of the games. I don't know, for one of the games, they show me the receipt that this was the original two-bit converter. They even brought me the laptop that they recorded the game on where a child says, I gave it to my wife. So the only difference was it was like Windows 7 before and it got upgraded, but he told me this is the machine. So I remember when I was sent to Banning and I did a speech about this, one of the things I told people was though I wasn't done with my work yet. Um, one of the things that I'm, uh, I feel blessed is in this work is that I have, according to Billy and Robert, access to the actual equipment that they used to make that world record according to what they state. And no one else has access to that. So I'm gonna do every test I can imagine that has to do with what we're looking for while I have access to those machines. No one else had access to that. And um, especially in the forum, like 99% of people are just doing speculation or conspiracy theories or what they think it could be. But there was really a handful of people that actually had a board, uh, a converter, uh, test equipment, like I know David Ray certainly found somebody before he got some of the equipment that had a Donkey Kong machine. And he started work to defend his friend too. And, and, and uh, David, didn't Robert, Robert sent you the two-bit converter through the mail, right? I received a two-bit converter from Rob. Uh, I think I received it maybe a little bit after I received the one from Jace Hall. So I actually had two two-bit converters that I tested to see what, you know, when I actually received, uh, uh, I was working on a Donkey Kong board uh, from a local uh, 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 a local manager of an arcade here. He let me use his Donkey Kong board. And then uh, in July, on July 20th, is when I actually received Bill's board that he had said was used for the first two disputed scores. And then I started testing those using the two-bit converters as well. 
Right, right. But you started, uh, but David, you you started uh, the research right away. You found someone who had a Donkey Kong machine before you even received uh, the board from Billy. You had already started after you had spoken to Billy to help in the dispute. If I'm, am I correct? If I recall. Well, uh, I know that I did whatever I could based upon what I had at the time. And since I didn't have access to, let's say, a two-bit converter, I would just take, uh, I would go to arcades and look at the Donkey Kong uh, transitions and things like that. And right. then basically it was an attempt to poke holes in what people were claiming about Billy because, you know, as everyone that I've talked to initially said, you know, why, you know, you know, this seemed ludicrous on, on the face of it, you know. Uh, but when things eventually came to the point where I could test these things. And that was after the Twin Galaxies had decided to uh, ban and remove his scores. Uh, things didn't get better, they got worse. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like uh, Steve, Steve will tell you, I remember <clears throat> we were getting close to the deadline of having our final report because they might not tell you this, especially Team Billy won't tell you this, but um, Jace, Jace had this rule that any findings, anything you do um, that's official, you must put it on the forum and you must explain to them how it was done. So their tech, uh, I think it was uh, Gab or Gabe. I'm sorry, I don't remember Glee. the name of the tech. Glee, I'm so sorry. Glee must be able to replicate it because Glee also had a two-bit converter that Jace had bought, and it's the only way it would be, um, you know, official. And this the reason I'm bringing this up is because we would have weekly calls. Sometimes it was less than a week uh, with Jace on the progress, on where we are, what we're doing, what we have found, uh, what we've been able to uh, debunk. When I mean debunk, it's um, Jace wasn't able to record in color, so he said it was impossible. Uh, I found a VCR from the era, and they recorded it. It doesn't look like the video, but it got color. The, the So it was like, look, we I was able to record color. So it officially went on the record. All right. So they recorded color, but it doesn't look like the video. And I remember I had told Billy, hey, there's something weird here. Things were not looking good. And a couple of days before that, I see that... Um, there's talk in the shop that they're starting to reach out to David Race. And I'm like, uh oh, I think they're moving on to another tech. This just ran in my head. And uh, the truth is, once I found like the missing key, and I'm like, oh man, this is not arcade. And not 90%, not 99%. I go, this is 100% not arcade like it just isn't i i called steve i showed him in in like non-tech english form and when steve saw that he goes oh man we gotta call we gotta call billy and i told i told him you know what give me a minute let me let me meet with billy in private i'll have a talk with him i was a nobody at the time you know most i was getting was uh, a few little death threats from the first video i did but it's the internet. If you don't get death threats, you're doing the internet wrong. So that's just how it goes. And um, I meet with Billy at the arcade game sales real late at night. And I liked Billy. Billy was nice to me. And I really wanted to help him, but this was not right. And I said, Billy, is there something you need to tell me? I mean, I'm willing to walk out of this because I've done nobody and just say, I, 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 I can't find or inconclusive, I, I would walk out and just bow out. And he looked at me straight in the face with a poker face. And he literally said, all I want you to do is say the truth. And I'm like, what? Oh, okay. So I call Steve. I go, Steve, I spoke to Billy and I had a heart to heart and he just, his answer was just like, he's surprised, but he said, all I want you to do is say the truth. I go, okay. 
and I wrote up my report. Steve cleaned it up because I write uh, real uh, bad. And um, what you saw posted was 99% exactly what I wrote. Well, 98%. Steve, you know, he cleaned some of my punctuations and sentences. But that was me. I wrote that. And Steve was the one that posted because I didn't have an, uh, an account on the forum. And it was strange because when it came out, I got a call from Steve and Robert at the same time. They were on three-way. It's like, did you write that? Yeah, it's like, did you write that? And what's funny is that they knew I was going to write it because we had a pre-plan with Joe West and at what time we were going to release it. But they, they were asking me if Steve was the one who wrote that. I go, no, Steve posted it. I wrote it. And, uh, and why are you surprised? Like they were really taken back. Like, I don't know if they thought I was going to just lie on it, but they literally told me, Billy literally told me, say the truth. And I said, okay. So I wrote it up and then I was told, talk to Joe West. Joe West said, look, release it late at a certain time at night. Because Joe West wanted to release his little uh, speech uh, around the same time. And, uh, and that was it, man. Two or three days later, they, they pulled all the scores. But it's really strange because a lot of this was planned. And now they're trying to act like I'm just some guy from some fanboy from the street that isn't really a tech. And... They don't even bring up Steve. Steve was their friend who literally sought out me to help them. And they're acting like Steve's a nobody. And I noticed this is how Billy operates. He he will he doesn't care if you've known him for 20 years, he'll throw you under the bus if it's gonna affect his little his little fantasy world. And it's cruel. He's hurt a lot of good people in this community that they hold their scores real dear because it's like an accomplishment. And here comes this man who's been dressed up like a penguin for 20 years and says, no, I want that. You're nobody. Goodbye. And you're like, what? And it's, uh, it's sad. But, and, yeah. and just to be clear, Carlos, because uh, I want to make sure that there's not any confusion, uh, that conference call you had at the end, that was between you and Billy and Robert, and Steve was not on the call, I believe, right? Steve was not on the call. It, and it was strange because, uh, I'll, I'll speed it up, but it, it's strange because Robert, though it was his shop, Robert tended more into the, um, doing his stocks and stuff. So I barely had any communication with Robert. Steve would because Steve was Robert's friend. But um, this was one of the first times that I had Robert literally like talking to me about the thing. It's like, and it was Robert and Billy on the call when they called me to ask me if that, um, if, getting a call if that post of my findings was me if i wrote that or was it steve kleizak and i said no that was me carlos pinero steve was not on the call um and it was within minutes of it going up on the forum but they were surprised and oddly they didn't act they sounded surprised but they didn't act mad um a couple of days later, Billy called me for something and he was still nice. Billy was nice to me for almost a whole year after that incident. Uh, even bringing me hot sauces for my wife, well, my ex-wife's business with her name on it. And it was until that contract signing, that paper signing, where it really went downhill. Where I remember even Steve would tell me, how can you talk to a guy like that? And I'm like, the truth is I'm, I'm trying to be as neutral and as and quiet, but after that, I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm I'm just like everybody else. I'm not thrown under the bus. Mm -hmm. But no, Steve was not on that call. Oh yeah. And uh, back to you, David. Uh, you kind of already talked about this a bit, but um, 
uh, how did you get involved in uh, testing the dispute? Like, what, what, or I guess to put it another way, uh, what do you recall the first time you heard about it? Well, apparently, I didn't know at the time, but uh, at least I don't recall at the time that the dispute had begun in either in August or September of 2017. But I think one of the first times that I heard about it was in the very beginning of February. You know, uh, I wasn't a, a regular contributor or I didn't even really go on the uh, Twin Galaxies forums. Uh, I mean, for the scores, you know, stuff like that, you know, the perfect Pac-Man and some other things like that, uh, that's fine. But, you know, and it was like, I had, I had a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, an account on Twin Galaxies, but apparently I forgot what the, the password was. So I opened up another account. It was like Proval, which is my screen name. And then I opened up the Christian Pac-Man and I began to look to see what was being posted there. And then I posted a few things, but most of my interaction for how I came to find out about it was on Facebook. And that was the beginning of February. And then apparently some people took notice of what I was writing in the defense of Billy Mitchell uh, or basically trying to say this whole thing is uh, ludicrous. You know, it's, uh, you know, you're appealing to things, you know, without evidence. At the time, there really wasn't much evidence. Nobody had done any testing at the time. And it was just looked like it was a witch hunt. Looked like people were trying to, out, uh, they were out to get Billy and stuff like that. And so the beginning of February, uh, maybe might have been the second or third or maybe a little bit after that I had started making posts and then I remember uh, I think I got contacted or I, I'd received maybe some messages from Stephen Kleisav uh, and then I remember uh, uh, it was uh, Rob Childs was uh, planning I uh, by this time uh, Isaiah Triforce Johnson had uh, sent me a, a message on Messenger say Billy wants to talk to me apparently Billy had, had texted me something I didn't know who it was but apparently he got a hold of my number and then Triforce Johnson later that night had call, called for a sent a message to me on messenger and said Billy would like to talk with you and then he gave me his number and I said okay that that's what that number was and so I called Billy and it was it was after midnight I believe uh, if I if I go back and check but that was like on the 9th of February so it was like uh, I, I guess he had tried to contact me by text or earlier in that day on the 8th, and then I had called him on February 9th. And so, and then basically he was giving me the rundown of what was going on about the two-bit converter and, and Rob Childs, and they were planning on, you know, this technical analysis of where they got it from and all this kind of stuff. And then that's when Rob Childs put his technical analysis, and then that's where I think one of the first times I had seen comments by, like, Carlos uh, and things like that. And from that point, then it started going into where we're looking at the board, you know, how the board is drawn. Um, a lot of it was theoretical because obviously I'm not, a, uh, if people don't already know that people have referred to me as a tech, but I am not a professional technician. Uh, you know, so, and uh, the thing is, I was doing my best with the information I had. From this, I would ask certain people who knew more about MAME. I said, "How did you know you can do like a step by step, you know, like a point? You know, you can go through the process on a debugger to see how the the screen was drawn." And I thought, "Okay, this looks good." And I was asking this, asking somebody who was in the know. I said, "Does it look like what I'm saying is correct?" And uh, the the response of the feedback was positive. I said, "Okay, I thought I'm on the right track here." Uh, uh, but I didn't know as much about, you know, the arcade and stuff about like there's an interrupt where uh, obviously things that are going to show on the screen are not going to be a stepwise. Yes, the program does draw that way. But, you know, when you've got 300 or 400 different uh, discrete steps, those are no way are those going to show up on an arcade unless you're using a more modern processor. I mean, that's why you see some of the things on main, for instance, or that's why you see something that uses main. Let's say like an arcade shop a programmable piece, uh, PCB, you'll see similar, you know, uh, signatures on those that you will not see on a, like a Z80 processor. This is the kind of stuff that I found out over time. I didn't know it at the time, but I thought I was doing my best to defend Billy. And from February on, eventually I was uh, received as much information as I could from Billy. Uh, if you have like the clearest shots of the board that you, that he said that he used the board, 
uh, originally the uh, from what Rob Childs had said is that his technical analysis said that they used uh, the converter out to a PC, I mean, sorry, a two bit score con converter out to a VCR, direct to VCR. No mention was made of a laptop. No mention was made of anything like that. Uh, I do remember when Carlos had posted his video uh, about how they would record it to a laptop. I'm thinking, scratching my head. I don't recall Rob Child saying anything like that. It was directly to a VCR. And then it kind of like, well, the story changed. So well, maybe we didn't say it that way. Maybe we didn't give you all the information. Well, that's apparently that's how things are when you talk with uh, with Billy and Rob Childs. I mean, with the experience, it's like, uh, we, we, we didn't give that information. We, we gave the, you know, the, uh, we, we put out something that was so certain that Rob Childs put a $5,000 challenge out there if anybody could dispute it. Uh, but this is what a two-bit score converter will produce. And, well, I don't think that would, he would really follow through on it, but no, a two-bit score converter will not produce what he'd claimed in his technical analysis. Uh, things started changing. Uh, Carlos said he tested the, the laptop. I used a laptop. I used maybe two or three uh, different uh, capture cards. Uh, one being the gigware that, uh, he, that Rob Child said that they used and like uh, Carlos said they used in their testing. I was unable to get any kind of signal, you know, that would show this is something that would be recorded directly to a laptop. I said, well, this, is not, this isn't working. I mean, I can have a VHS tape, which has a pretty stable picture, but the moment I run that instead of to a VCR, run it to my laptop, it looked like crap. I mean, it was glitchy and it was black and white. Uh, I didn't get anything like that. So basically, you know, I'm just rambling now. Started in February, I got a little bit of information about that. Eventually it came to the point where Rob Childs and uh, Jace Hall had sent me a two-bit score converter. Uh, and at that time, uh, I talked to Billy and he was trying to get me a Donkey Kong machine. So the claim that he didn't try to provide material and things like that, he got the text messages where he was trying to get some others in the community that were near me to provide a Donkey Kong machine. And I said, well, no, I can't have it in my home. I'm not going to do it in my home. You know, I don't have the room for it. And there's other reasons stuff there. I said, so I'll find somebody here locally, you know, and they said they would let me use their shop. I'd go in the back of their arcade and I would use their Donkey Kong machine. Uh, and then shortly after that, I started doing testing with the 2-bit score converter. Billy said, and we would not just give you the best pictures of the board, but we can actually send you the board. So I did receive his board set, the video board and the uh, uh, the CPU board on July 20th, 2018. And then shortly thereafter, I started testing that. So I have VHS, I've got DVD. I've, I've tested it a number of different ways, as Carlos can, can attest. Oh, yeah. People can look at the... Uh, the playlist that I put on YouTube. Originally, it was unlisted, but it seems that uh, after the uh, evidence package came out, uh, that unlisted playlist was made public, so everyone can look at it now. So <laughs> there's no. <laughs> so it ended up being a lot of testing, and it came to be an inconclusive thing. I said, well, this the product of these uh, recordings using his original hardware will not produce what we see, but I was thinking, well, I can't try to, sorry, I can't play my hand and say, I think this is how it could have been done. Because I knew that if I said something like that, then somebody else was going to jump over and say, yeah, that's how we did it. And I said, I can't, I can't have that. I have to know exactly how somebody did something. I'm not going to tell you how I thought it was done. Because I could, I could think of a number of ways it could have been done. But that's why I kept asking, so how was it done? How was it done? Was there anything else that you used? What else came into play? I couldn't do that. And and that's why it ended up being inconclusive because technically it still could have been arcade. Uh, something could have been manipulated. Let's say the frames could have been changed. Uh, it could have been flipped on, a, on software, the orientation, but none of that came out. And then finding out how things played out after my initial assessment in September of 2018 and uh, evidence that basically came to light in September of 2019, uh, things kind of went uh, south real quick, I guess. You know, I don't like being lied to. And if anyone's read my post on Facebook, they know uh, that I, di I didn't really hold back. I had people calling me 
or messaging me telling me, oh, we saw some of your posts. Could you please take it down? Because, you know, they're doing confidential testing. Uh, Neil Hernandez, by the way, uh, sent me that stuff right before. It was either right before or right after I was posting posting something. I said, no, I'm not going to let someone anymore dictate, you know, what an, I, I can publicly produce. You know, but they want to try to keep everything quiet and silent. And whether you disagree or with them or not, they just want you to be quiet. That's what they really want. And I wasn't going to do that. Anymore. So there you have it. <laughs> I think an interesting <laughs> moment, Walter, that Carlos and David both experienced. Mm. Both of them, from what they have told me, asked Robert the simple question of, how did you read, like the Boomers Million 62 game? How did you record that to disc and then revert or transfer it onto VHS? And I think in both cases, when they asked Robert, I think David may have messaged Robert. I know Carlos asked him, you know, in the shop. And he just said, I don't know, I don't remember. And I think that was a head scratching moment for both of them. How, you know, because I know Robert for years, he's a very deliberate, you know, calculated, very intelligent person. So for him to all of a sudden be, oh, I don't know, I don't remember something like that. It's definitely very, you know, odd. And uh, mm -hmm. that's one moment I remember them, both of them telling me at different points is, yeah, we point blank asked Robert like a simple question and he couldn't provide an answer to that, which was, you know. Right. Yeah, well, for, for clarity, what I was told was the first two games, uh, when I mean the first two, the King of Kong game, which is 1.047, and the Mortgage Broker game, which is the 1.050, was recorded straight to VCR. But the Boomers game, the famous board swap uh, video, which is, it's just them creating an alibi, and that's my opinion, which I feel is very accurate. But um, that that one was recorded straight to a laptop. Now, a lot of people don't tend to be very techy, but even if you had a, they had a capture board, a USB capture board, and those things, 99% of capture boards are capture in. They don't have outputs. And a computer does not have a VCR output or what's called an RCA, the yellow cable you see in the old video game. It usually is 90% of the time a VGA. So I had asked Robert, because I'm like, wow, wait a minute. They recorded on a computer. In the board swap video, you see the laptop in there. You don't see a two-bit converter, but you see a laptop. And I asked Robert, so the 1.062, the boomer state, that one was recorded straight to a computer. And he goes, yes. Uh, no VCR. He goes, no. I go, okay. Well, if you recall, if you follow this stuff, you literally see Billy at some event where he's between two televisions where he beat Donkey Kong and he beat Donkey Kong Jr. And there's two VCRs playing the tape, playing the video that he had just broke the record the week before. Okay. That's the story. And you I asked a lot of Rob, irony about that too regarding yeah. David. David's yeah. the one that recorded that, ironically. On a camcorder, and you see the girder finger in like a few minutes into the last 10 minutes of the video. But I simply asked Robert, I'm like, Robert, if you record it into a laptop, how did you get it out of the laptop into a VCR? Because a laptop doesn't have a video out, and a VCR doesn't have a VGA in. And he told me, this is all the equipment that they used. And he looked at me, and he just says, Hmm, it was a long time ago. I don't remember. And Robert is a guy, when I would talk to him, he had an answer for everything. And not like Billy answers, like Billy lies. Where he'll tell you an amazing story and he'll say, oh, I helped that guy. No, Robert would be like, oh, you know, I used this transformer and I did this and that. And I finally got Robert to just say, oh, it was a long time ago. I don't remember. I go very strange. So I attempted to burn the video into a VCR and then no into a make it a DVD because it had a DVD burner and I played the DVD on a player and recorded on a VCR and I did those tests and I have it on an unlisted YouTube page but I did all those tests I'm like this does not look like the game 
plus the orientation. Well, the 1.062 is the only game that had the orientation setting correct. But I'm like, no. It, even every trick I did, everything I tried, it just didn't look the same at all. I'm like, this is not, this is unkosher. Something's off here. But I kept trying until finally I, was, I found like the key. I'm like, oh no, this is not arcade. And all three games have the signatures of not being from arcade 100%, not 99.9, 100%. That is not arcade at all. But that, that's it's... for the clarity of the three games. Right. I think another enlightening moment in David's case, if I may, David, was David was not aware of that. <laughs> there was footage that was discovered of a 2006 MTV interview with Robert Merzak, where he is actually showing the very King of Kong game. This is a year before the movie came out. And it's that exact game, and you can actually see the transitions where it goes to the, you know, it draws the three girders. And I know that David was not aware that footage even existed. And when he was made aware of that, I think that may have been the tip of the iceberg. Correct me if I'm wrong, David, in, in, in David's case, as he was going through the process, the fact that that had been discovered. And I think I remember even sending it to David. He had asked me about it. And the orientation so, of that, too, was wrong. Yeah. You know, the Ars, I saw it in an Ars Technica article, That's right. which was shortly after uh, the evidence package come out. And then I think it was actually Walter himself, Ersatz Katz, uh, when I went to the link, it was a uh, what he had posted in I think Donkey Kong forum or something of that if, if something of that nature if I'm correct. So when I started to check it out, I actually sent uh, Billy Jr. I said, "Do you know about? Did you know about these videos?" And he said, "Yes." And he says, "But you know, basically, uh, it's not going to matter. We'll use the other games or something like that." I mean, I have the you know, the messenger, you know, a conversation that we had uh and you know it's like this this changes the whole assessment at that point regardless of their their whole gameplay analysis and and what their plan was you know to try to defend billy i had already come to the conclusion at least in my mind that if this was going to work in any way it had to be something that was manipulated or edited it had to be something that was somebody had attempted to pull one over on Billy, TG, and, and the whole community to basically frame Billy or something like that. And this kind of just, as I've said before, took it off the table. There's no way, unless somebody wants to make a, a grand conspiracy where MTV is in on it, uh, which is, is just way too far. I remember, I think, when I was doing the testing, you know, with the actual uh, hardware, Billy's board, and then also the, uh, the, the arcade owner's uh, Donkey Kong boards, uh, I started to see things, or didn't see things, I should say, uh, the quality, the signal, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I remember, you know, I remember talking to them about, you know, how was how were these things done, you know, like Rob Childs, you know, like how would you, like what Carlos would say, how would you run this out of uh, your computer to record it to a VHS? And I, I know how you can do it. I mean, I've done it. I mean, I've done it on my computer. I mean, you can do it with MAME, you can do it with any kind of playback, but I wanted to have him tell me. I'm not gonna give an answer, like I said before, to have them try to say, oh yeah, that's how he did it. And it was like, uh, no, it's just, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought, <laughs> sorry. You asked Robert and he, he told you the same thing. He, he didn't remember, he didn't know. Yeah, I mean, it was like he mentioned in one of our conversations that, uh, yeah, I could run it to, uh, to a computer and then you could burn it to a DVD. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why didn't you burn it to a DVD? I mean, why in the world? I mean, that'd be a whole lot easier if you're running something digitally into a computer. You could just use your software to burn the video. I also asked him, I said, so do you have the, uh, the original recording? Obviously, if you record it into a computer, you have the file somewhere, right? It has to be a file. And he says, well, we don't know where it is. It's probably on one of his hard drives somewhere. Well, you know what? If it's on one of his hard drives, then maybe somebody should light a fire under Rob, Rob Child. I told that to Billy. I said, if he's got all this evidence and pictures and videos and all this other kind of stuff, then why don't somebody uh, find him? And because if they really did have this evidence, that would be very important to look. 
because it could definitely show whether this was arcade or main if you had a uh, file that was run directly into a computer. Uh, so I think that's something that should be looked at if this thing goes any further as far as uh, the legal matter. I said, you know what? They claimed that the uh, original recording was uh, on a laptop, which means there has to be a file somewhere. And if that file does exist, then maybe somebody should subpoena that so we can find out what it really looks like. Mm -hmm. Also, speaking Walter. Of like, uh, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking of like uh, photos and stuff, uh, Steve, tell us about this uh, lady in uh, Sebring. <laughs> oh, <I> just... <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, um, well, that was regarding the Mortgage Brokers Convention, the million fifty score. And uh, at one point in the process with me and Carlos at the shop on a pseudo daily basis, I remember Bill had a breakthrough moment where he was telling us how, you know, he got in touch with this woman in Sebring, Florida that he had been friends with for years. I think I, I remember him saying that his son went to school with her with her kid or something. And that um, he said that she had pictures, video footage, a reading of the minutes from the organizer and that she was gonna mail it to him. And I remember him telling me and Carlos both this. And I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. This is a breakthrough right here. I mean, like to David's point, I mean, you actually have footage and photography and all this that exists. Well, you know, First of all, I'm like, you should be going up there and just driving up there and getting it from her. But he basically was like in the mail kind of thing. And I remember when he first brought this up, again, we were still completely in exoneration defense mode of Bill. We were hoping for anything to uh, materialize because otherwise, you know, we were trying to realize what the core of the dispute even was because there was all like to Carlos's point in the Twin Galaxies forum thread, you know, people had statements that went all kinds of different directions from the shutter effect and I mean, just all these different elements that weren't really the core of the dispute. But when Bill had mentioned to us that he knew this lady in Sebring, she was at the mortgage brokers convention at the time it happened. She has photography and video footage and a room shot. I was like, great, awesome. And I remember maybe a week later, yeah, a week later, what's the progress on it? I remember me and Carlos, we kept that would ask him all the way up to a month later, well, where's all this footage you talked about? And it was still like in the mail. Like he just, it's in the mail, it's on its way. Never gave a direct answer after that, after telling that initial story. And, I, you know, obviously in hindsight now, this is obviously, you know, must have been BS because I've still never seen, you know, the, uh, the evidence of what he claimed in that story that he told us. Um, but that, you know, it, I keep hearing the statement moving the goalposts that they like to use. But the irony is they're the ones that continuously move the goalposts. Me, Carlos, and now David, we've been stating the same things that we experienced for two and a half years now. I have not changed my account or experience of it one iota. It's exactly the same as it was because these are what the facts are. By the way, a quick uh, interjection on the Robert Merzak 2006 MTV interview that clearly shows that King of Kong million 47, clearly shows the transition screen of the girders, but there's also footage that was discovered a year before that in 2005 at a game convention overseas in the UK that Bill Walter and I believe Brian Koo, they were even dressed alike in the USA shirts or whatever. They attended this event. There's a man that goes by the name The Evener on the Twin Galaxies forum thread. I forgot his, his real name, Jason maybe? Hey. I don't know if his real name is public. He does fantastic work. He does. He does great work. And somehow he discovered this footage. And there's a section where you clearly see that same exact game. And now we're going back to 2005 being displayed, displayed at this convention showing, you know, this same exact game that was in the 2006 MTV interview that was in the King of Kong. And the irony of that, the fact that we're watching a film where people are watching a game with the wrong orientation. I mean, just in hindsight, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, the fact that it dates back to even that, that same exact, you know, and, and with the million 47, like Carl Jopes rightly points out in a, in a recent YouTube piece that he did, you know, because Bill wants to rely on, oh, there's eyewitnesses. 
well, there is no eyewitnesses for the King of Kong game. That's, I mean, he has no answer for that, which mm-hmm. is the original, you know, obviously that became the King of Kong game. So, um, but, well, another thing about the uh, yeah. moving the goalpost, uh, you know, Stephen mentioned uh, the Sebring woman and uh, about uh, all this footage, pictures, and video is in the mail, you know, and the minutes will be are being sent to Billy. Well, the story that I was told, and this this could have been either at the same time or it could have been after, you know, it, I can't say for sure, but I remember him saying that this woman was there, you know, obviously the testimony. I believe it was if you were. If you were to try to pin me on, I'd probably say he's maybe referencing Sheila Kearney, the one that's mentioned in these affidavits and his evidence package in this the court filings, where she said, you know, uh, she was there, she witnessed everything. There was video. Uh, there was a GameStop manager, you know, basically hooked it up. And the story that I was told was that she has video, you know, room shot, you know, the board being put in. I mean, they've got video of the board being put into the machine. And the thing is, they said. She actually sent all that stuff. She sent the board back to Nintendo, the one that was supposedly certified by Wayne Shure. And then she also sent all the video and all the evidence she had to Twin Galaxies, and Twin Galaxies lost it. So originally, <laughs> from what Steve was saying, is that uh, she has the video. She's sending it to Billy. But the story I got was that she sent the videos to Twin Galaxies, and Twin Galaxies lost it. And, and Carlos, you were there when they told yeah. me that, I believe, correct? About the I, was, I, I was there, like, after a month, it literally became a joke where I would tell you, let me guess, they're still in the mail, right? And I remember I, I told you, I said, man, if it's that important, I drive to Sabrina. It's in Florida. It's only like three hours. And it's, it's shorter than going to Orlando where Disney World is. But Billy would simply just say, Oh, it's in the mail. It's on its way. And it's already been a month. It, it's like, that's never going to arrive. It, it's just, it was just a shut up line. But, well, and, and to keep us what, going. What David mentioned with Robert, where he's like, well, I have it in a warehouse somewhere. Well, if you actually have evidence, it'd be pretty important to actually be the first thing you do is, is dig that out and, and have it, you know, if it really exists. So yeah, it's just, you know. Oh, no, no. Yeah, they have everything they need to to save them but just verbally verbally well remember that the king of kong was real until it was proven not and then it's just oh you believe documentaries and then the mortgage broker swap video was real until he got busted and then it's like oh it was just uh it was just a promotional video and then everything is real until it's disproven and then it's like it's like, no, no, that was just for fun. And everything changes. Every story changes. And Billy manages that really well. He'll tell me and Steve, because he knows we talk, uh, one story. He'll tell David another. And then sometimes he'll talk to the two or other people just to make sure that they're not talking to each other. He's a con man. He's a con man. I'm telling you, no, there was really no reason to ever send a Nintendo board to Nintendo. This is another, another, my opinion, I have to say that, my opinion, but I'm pretty sure it's accurate, uh, that he was just, just like the board swap, he was creating an alibi. You know what? I can send a, well, I can send an actual Nintendo board to Nintendo while some, while I'm playing a main game because nobody sees who's doing it. I even, for one, for one time, I used to ask myself, is Billy not lying when he says, then he says, uh, you know, I, I didn't play main because was it really him playing those games? The reality is nobody's ever seen who actually played those games. It can be someone else. Or the joke, remember, see, the joke is that Walter Day goes to India twice a year because he's got some kid in a hut playing video games for him. It's like, oh, you know, give me my tapes. And then he says Billy Mitchell did him. And that was just an inside joke. But, but nobody really has ever seen Billy play any of those games in real life. And if you watch The King of Kong, which is now fake, according to him, The King of Kong is literally a movie that made him famous. And in that whole movie, you never see Billy play. It's literally a movie about Billy never showing up to play, and it made him famous. 
he never shows up. The only time he showed up, he just walked by Steve. As to Steve Weeby. And that was it. Even the cover literally doesn't have Billy on it. Because it is just a movie about torturing Steve Weeby and how Billy Mitchell is so good, he doesn't even have to play a game. But this is just, you realize when you really say, all right, let me put the tech things to the side and let me start talking to other people that have been looking into this because this is not new. And you realize everybody has a different story and it is just to shut that person up for the moment. But Billy told Steve Kleizak and myself about that video because he said, oh, I found the woman and that she actually, he told us she actually recorded when they, when they pulled the board out. After the event, they couldn't find the guy that had locked the machine. So the day after the event, when it's all done, she went back because she was one of the managers that had set it up. They videotaped them opening that machine and pulling that board out and boxing it to go to Nintendo. And I said, great. And he was all excited. This is Billy. Billy's like, yeah, we, she found it and she's shipping it to us. And every couple of days, hey, did it come? Did it arrive? Did it arrive? Within, you know, after a month of asking, we're like, let me guess, it's in the mail. And with the straightest face, Billy would say, oh, it's in the mail. It's in the mail. It's coming. And he'll walk away. I'm like, at, wow. At, at the time, you two were excited. You're you like, think, all right, like probably high fives. Like, this is going to be absolutely. the thing that makes yeah. a case yeah, for us. Definitely. Absolutely. And two things that are facts and not conjecture, Walter, are that that certified Nintendo board that he mailed to Nintendo, well, Carlos tested on that very board. He had yes. that very board that he tested on. And when we received the digitized versions of the million 47 and the million 50, that's at the point where Carlos sat me down. Now that we have the digitized versions that Jay sent us, where it's not just once a girder finger in two and a half hours, but you see the emulated signatures all throughout those games. The whole and game, man. Digitized, it was clearer to to realize um that's when we knew carlos was like well that board that i tested the certified nintendo board does not produce what's on that footage that we're looking at it's it, it, it can't be so you know tell us a bit about how that um digitized footage came about wasn't it um i believe it was richie knuckles from what i was told jace was sent the digitized versions or copies of those games from Richie Knuckles. Richie had claimed that he had had them for a while. He knows for a fact nobody tampered with them because they're like his private stash in essence. Yeah, there were tapes. There were tapes. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, what the, the story was, and I never confirmed it, but it seems to be the same story I keep hearing, was that <clears throat> Richie Knuckles was given a copy a, of when Billy uh, played that game. And Richie Knuckles took this tape and unmodified it and he stuck it in one of his storages or one of his warehouses. And uh, years pass, this investigation's going and Knuckles opens one of his warehouses and he finds the tape. Of course, now they're claiming, well, it's not original. Well, Knuckles was so excited because he says, I remember when they gave me these copies, and I know nobody. And what they meant was uh, uh, the the man from Canada. Um, Dwayne Richards. Uh, Dwayne Richards. Uh, Knuckles was very confident, like nobody has touched these tapes since they were given to me when it was a copy from the master. And it was given to me direct and nobody's touched it. And in his attempt to help Billy, like all of us were trying to do, he sent it to Jace or to Twin Galaxy and said, look, I can, I can certify you that these tapes were given in my hand years ago and they've been in my storage since and no, no Dwayne Richards or nobody has come and tampered with those tapes. These are clean. So, of course, um, Jace put it in his VCR. That's a digitizer. It's like one I have. It's very expensive. And because uh, it comes with a digital output. So it was very, very clean copy. And of course, that being digitized, because the video everybody was seeing was a camcorder aimed at a TV. And that always has timing problems. But this was 
a, a video that was copied from the master onto a VCR. So the sync signal is always there. And Jay sent me the link of those games. And boy, was it clean. And, and when I mean clean, it wasn't shaky. You could see the transitions in slow-mo. Um, it didn't have the white balance off. It didn't have all these things that a camcorder to a TV would do. And when I saw that, you can see that famous girder finger everybody saw in like one frame in two hours. Uh -uh. Well, you see that girder finger at least 15 to 20 times in that two hour play. Um, the transitions were clearly not arcade. Um, when you would look at the, the fireball with Mario and the score, it was the same game. So it's like, oh, that's the same game. There's no way that with so much random stuff happening that an hour and a half in, everything looks exactly pristine in it. That was the exact game. And I'm like, wow. And that, once again, was Richie Knuckles being the same way as I was and David and, and Steve Kleizak. Like, oh, I found something that's going to help Billy based on the stories we've been told. Knuckles was a believer that uh, the tapes were tampered and he had tapes that were untampered. I believe the story is of the two-bit converter. When I tested it, it wasn't so. Steve believed that people were trying to frame um, Billy. It wasn't so. David believed what he was told. He did his test and it wasn't so. But that was what I had heard. So only reason I interjected is because it wasn't that Richie had a digital version. He had a VCR tape copy that he knows was given to him from a copy of the master and that nobody had touched it. He had just had it in his storage with his collection of other games and arcades and memorabilia. And he believed, huh, I have an untampered tape. And that was it. I was like, oh, you got the MTV interview that shows the girders. You got you have videos in the UK before the movie came out that shows the orientation problem. Even Richie's tapes, the orientation was upside down, had the girder fingers, had all the MAME signatures. It's like, uh, it, too many coincidences. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, that's not coincidence. It's a duck. It quacks, it walks, and that's a duck, man. Well, that was the final straw for me. That's when Carlos did take me aside. He contacted me after he was he was able to go frame by frame on those digitized copies and that or versions and then he look man this isn't good he's <laughs> basically and, and at that point he broke it down in layman's terms because it was so clear these versions to uh to realize so and let's uh bring you back in uh david uh was there anything else um prior to the um because uh, I know it was the basically around the time of the September 2019 evidence packet that really kind of made you go, wait, something's not right. But was there anything before that you kind of left you scratching your head? I, I think you listed a couple things already, but. Well, I do remember uh, I had started working at a new job, uh, actually in the very beginning of 2018. Uh, and I remember, and I just actually found a copy of this. Uh, uh, I think it was probably about August. I think this is where I lost my train of thought before, where I said, all right, I was given all these stories, uh, Rob Childs, and then what Billy was explaining based upon what I had seen in my testing. And then I kind of like had the notion in the back of my mind, I started uh, thinking, it's like, am I being manipulated here? I said, is this, is this what is known as gaslighting? And I remember at work uh, actually looking up a uh, uh, the Wikipedia entry on gaslight, and I did print out, and then I noticed. I said, "This is, this seems like exactly what Billy and Rob and some others were doing," and yet I still continued to give them the benefit of the doubt because you know what, I don't want to you know just come out and accuse somebody you know and say you know what, uh, just say yeah you know what I, you know what. They claim they have all this evidence besides the technical, which had to do with the video, had to do with the pictures, had to do with all the eyewitnesses who said they they saw the boards being put in and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm saying it like, oh, we don't have it. It was sent to Twin Galaxies. It seems like anytime you asked a question, 
there was always an answer that put the evidence farther out of reach where nobody could ever have access to it. And I'm thinking, I printed this out August, highlighted some stuff, gaslighting. I said this, and then of course, later in 2019, after the evidence package and seeing how, let's say Billy or his son was repurposing everything to say that, oh, Rob Childs never really said this, or he didn't have all the information. He, little, he knew little to nothing about the process. I said, really? It seems like that was in response to my initial assessment. Because when I talked to Billy about that, the last conversation I had with him, uh, Rob Charles apparently was upset that I was calling him calling him out or uh, maybe uh, alluding to him as a liar or lying. And it's like, I said, no, I'm not, this isn't something that I can go back. He was saying, well, we can fix this. We can try to make it so where, where you are comfortable with it. And, it. and maybe he's not getting it. I'm thinking what Rob Child said was false. He had never claimed this. He, he was very certain about what he claimed. And all this time, I let everything go and say, all right, benefit of the doubt. You know, we'll finally see the evidence. And it wasn't happening. And no matter, and I wasn't going to say, all right, you're, I think this was maybe, what was it? September, I think, 17th is when the last time I talked to Billy Mitchell. And he was trying to say, well, we can make something where you're comfortable. And they basically, he said, we can just change the statements to make it you know, where you're, you're comfortable with it. And it's like, no, I mean, you've already put out statements that are not true with Rob Childs and stuff like that. And how in the world am I in a, And it was kind of like saying, well, maybe you don't understand. You know, you, maybe, you mis, un, maybe you misread something. And it's like, no, I know exactly what I read. And everybody else who saw it publicly knew what it was read. And then basically, I haven't talked to him since then. And then things that keep coming to light, you know, my assessment, my further understanding of how, what a microcontroller is, for instance. And that's like a mini computer as opposed to like a microprocessor. You know, like these early arcade shop boards, you know, that can produce, quote, MAME-like signatures. It's like their own computer. You know, a microprocessor, a CPU that was used like on a Donkey Kong, uh, it's not the same thing. A Z80 is not the same thing as like a modern microcontroller from, let's say, the, the 2000 era arcade shop PCB or arcade SD, which is a more modern thing, probably came out in 2010. And all these things, it's like, well, the reason why you could see some of these modern signatures that I thought, you know, if it's possible on a modern computer, then maybe it's possible because it is hardware. It is a PCB. Maybe it could have been done in some fashion or some configuration with external hardware or, or something else that was used in conjunction with the uh, with the, uh, the original Donkey Kong board, maybe you could produce it. But when I found out that these early boards were actually using, and uh, uh, their core emulation was using an earlier version mm -hmm. of MAME, that didn't help the matter either. So <laughs> what do you do? That's like, mm -hmm. so I would definitely say that the, uh, what is seen on those tapes is not from arcade. And then uh, regardless of how they try to point back to me and say my initial assessment was inconclusive, I said, well, you know what? When things come to light, that call into question your initial assessment, then what do you do? Just stick with it doggedly, or do you adjust it based upon the evidence? I think, you know, someone as open and honest is gonna do that, as opposed to like shouting, as I put in my declaration, you know, inconclusive, inconclusive. I said, well, you can always hope and pray that nobody will really look into it and they're just gonna believe your word, but evidence speaks for itself. What do you do? So. You also have a history with uh, Pac-Man, and I uh, believe, if I remember correctly, when you first started saying, hey, something's not right here, you were also citing uh, claims relating to Pac-Man. Hello? What's that now? Uh, you you have a history with Pac-Man, of course, uh, fastest perfect Pac-Man. And yeah. if I remember correctly, um, there were claims in the evidence packet uh, regarding uh, Pac-Man and Billy's Pac-Man score that you were like, wait a second. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember correctly, that was kind of part of your yeah. turnaround? Once, like I said, I was given the benefit of the doubt. You know, I didn't want to say, all right, am I being gaslit and manipulated? Okay, there's evidence, there's witnesses. And then when you find out that in the evidence package, which Billy Mitchell told me was never meant to be made public, you know, that is, I do have that documented. And it's like when he's saying that he made a public announcement to achieve the first perfect Pac-Man uh, on the 4th of July weekend, I said, that's false. I knew it's false. I mean, because I know the guy that was his main competitor, Rick Fothergill. Uh, Rick Fothergill was never notified about this. 
uh, all the evidence that I've seen with Billy Mitchell claiming that Walter Day didn't know that he was even there to do this thing in 2016 and some other YouTube videos. And then he's saying a public announcement was made and he'll say stuff like press releases were put out. There was media there. And I was like, no, none of that is true. And it's like, no matter how you try to spin it, it's never going to be true. And I asked Billy, I sent him text messages. I said, I said, I, I said, here's this thing from the evidence package, which says that you achieved uh, your perfect Pac-Man. And then you said a public announcement was made that you were going to be there and you promised a perfect score. I said, could you show me anything, any evidence whatsoever that you actually sent out a public announcement or anything like that was made prior to you arriving there on July 1st? And he wanted to talk. And I said, well, I don't need to talk for an hour. I sent him back a text message. I don't need to talk for an hour for you to send me a, a thing. And he says, well, I'm not comfortable with texting and stuff like that. I said, well, you know what? The time that it would take for you to just send me a link would be a would be a far less than the time it would take for me to talk with you and all this kind of stuff. I never got an answer. I've talked to Chris Ira about this. And it seems that anybody who's been dragged into this thing, uh, they're going to, at least if they're on Billy's side, they're going to change their story to fit with his. Uh, and uh, he claimed in that evidence package that he went to Japan, uh, which he did go to Japan. I mean, there's no doubt that. But there's a lot of things that are in question there, too, where he said that he actually did do another perfect game in front of a Japanese crowd. And I said, there's no evidence for that either. Basically, it's another lie. And you will notice that none of that uh, so-called claims in the evidence package in 2019 were included in the 2020 uh, court filings. Those things are missing. Uh, but the thing is, he's made recent statements of the same. You know, I mean, you'll look in uh, some of these old uh, newspaper clippings where he said that he was brought on stage with Nakamura, and then basically he repeated their performance. So this is, I mean, you can find clippings back there. He can deny it now all he wants, or he can claim that he did, and then say, oh, we got to cover it up because I've been called on it. Dave Race called my bluff, so I'm going to basically just maybe let that die out. But you still got the newspaper clippings from years ago, which claimed that he did it. Rick Fothergill told me, and whether or not this should be included or not, because Rick doesn't want to have anything to do with this drama, and I don't blame him, quite frankly. Right. Uh, he said, he, Bill, Rick Fothergill told Billy, I'm um, sorry, Billy Mitchell told Rick, uh, at least of what Rick told me, was that he said he went there with a, an arcade original Pac-Man machine, but they, said they didn't have a, a way of actually hooking up to their machine. And he said the machine that they had didn't even have a split screen. So there's no way that he would have, quote, performed, according to what Billy told Rick, uh, a perfect Pac-Man game in Japan. So what he is saying is historical revisionism. It's an anachronism. You try to change things to make it fit with your narrative that you're trying to portray to the public now. And I think Billy thinks that if he says it long enough and with all the passion and with all the people that really don't know the details, that, you know what, people will accept it. And I think that he thinks that a jury will accept it as well. Which, you know what, uh, like Carlos said, he's a cop man. What can you do? Wasn't there a comment Billy Mitchell Jr. posted about that? How it doesn't matter about the footage. It matters what a jury thinks of the eyewitnesses or something like that. Oh, yeah. That was a message that he sent to me. He says, like, yes. it's not going to matter. It's going to matter what, uh, you know, what 30 plus witnesses have to say. And I was like, really? Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is an interesting uh, subject, um, and I suppose uh, we could start with you, Steve, because you were kind of the first to uh, receive uh, Billy's wrath, for a lack of a better word. Um, uh, who would like to, uh, would any of you like to talk about how you've been treated since you kind of uh, basically came out and said, yeah, these were not arcade rendered? I wouldn't call it wrath. It's more just a disappearance. They just, you know, erased me from existence from there. Yeah. From there. Uh, I don't know, click or whatever. I mean, shortly after that verdict came out, that was pretty much it. I never heard from any of them ever again. I, I made an attempt a few times to go to arcade game sales, talk with Robert. Um, you know, I'd spoken with Bill once. I think it was actually on July 4th, maybe, of that year. Well, I know I definitely talked with them briefly. And, uh, you know, the one time I talked to Bill after the verdict, where I actually got a hold of him. He basically said, I have no harsh words for you, sir. And that was about it. He didn't really have much to say. And that's pretty much the last I ever heard of, heard from him. 
Uh, I'd say the only wrath, if you will, was from the Sun, from Junior, when uh, they started to do Retro Arcade Night, obviously without me. And, uh, you know, I'd seen that the event, they were still going to try to do it periodically. And there was one that was coming up, I believe it was around September or October of, uh, I guess, 2019. Yeah. Or either 2018 or 2019. But I basically called Robert and was like, hey, you know, I'd still like to come to the event, pay the money, even though it was my own event that I started with Robert and I wasn't a part of it anymore. I basically was like, I'd, I'm more than happy to come and pay the admission, especially if it's going for, you know, a charity or something community-based. And, uh, you know, because there's a lot of people who would show up to this that know me as the host of the event for eight years. And, uh, you know, it'd still be, it could still be a fun event regardless of what took place, you know, agree to disagree, move on, be civil, still have this event for the community or what have you. And at that point, Robert was like, I don't have a problem with you coming, but, you know, you're going to need to talk to Phil. And, uh, you know, I tried to get a hold of Senior, and I couldn't get a hold of him. And then Robert was like, well, you know, contact Junior then. So I, I sent a Facebook message to Billy Mitchell Jr., basically saying that, you know, hey, the event's coming up. Um, you know, Robert doesn't have a problem with me coming. But Robert did tell me that if I showed up, Bill would walk out of his own event is what Robert told me. So, but he also told me, oh, talk to, if you can't get all the senior, then message Junior. I messaged Junior and I was like, this is what I was told. And I was like, but I'd rather talk to the source to see if this is the case or if that was not the case. And it was a very civil, objective message I sent to Billy Mitchell Jr. And his response was basically a very, you know, vitriol, you know, calling me a cancer that needs to be suppressed. Mm. Uh, you know, I remember but, that. <laughs> saying threatening police activity if I showed up to the event, I'd be escorted out by police officers. And then he also said, but what's funny is he actually acknowledges that we were friends, me, Robert, and Bill for eight years. What's funny is in Bill's recent, one of his recent evidence uh, replies to Twin Galaxies, he actually claims that we were not friends. Bill actually says that in one of his most recent filings. So like he painted Carlos as some guy, the random guy that came off the street. He, he claims that we were never friends. And he basically says that what me and Carlos did was did never represented him, was never on behalf of him. It was self-determined, just an independent testing of our own accord. That's what is said in his recent filings to uh, reply to Twin Galaxies evidence. Oh, to the courts, yeah. Yeah, to the courts, which is a yeah. flat out lie. We're just yeah. fanboys and they forget that they paid to fly me to Bannon, California to do a speech on I, their behalf. I remember, because they wanted me to go out too, to Banning at that, on that trip, but I couldn't get out of work to do it. But they definitely paid for Carlos's flight. Carlos definitely shared a hotel room with Bill and Banning, California. So yeah. it's just ludicrous. It's absolutely like it's 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 laughable that they would try to paint a picture that we're just some random people that they barely knew. And you know, like in my case, we weren't friends. And he clearly says he says we weren't friends. Well, it's funny as I have text messages from Bill that I still have to this day where he's actually thanking me for my friendship. Um, I mean, you can go anywhere. You can go all over YouTube. There's tons of videos of Retro Arcade Night where it's me, Bill, and Robert hanging out taking questions to interviews from local uh, magazines. Um, there's actually some more recent footage from 2012 when, when me, Bill, and Robert are in his office from the old location of Arcade Game Sales and, you know, just kind of shooting the shit. Um, it's about probably 15, 20 minutes worth of footage. So you can, and we have a trading card. I mean, there's a trading card of me, Bill, and Robert, which celebrates the event, Retro Arcade Night, that I hosted, Robert facilitated, and Billy regularly attended. So, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But as far as the vitriol, or it was more or less just they cut the cord with me. There's no more use I have for them. So erase me from existence, except for that exchange with Billy Mitchell Jr. Uh, later on in the year regarding the retro arcade night that they were trying to resurrect on their own uh, without me, of course. So. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, Carlos, now um, I think I just got a message across the thing saying that you've got to leave soon, or yes, yes, I gotta go actually. All right, so. yeah. Did you have anything yeah you wanted to say uh, before you uh, took off? No, I just hope the truth comes out. Um, Billy Mitchell's a slippery one. <laughs> he, he does not care about the truth as long as it puts him in a in in you know in a positive light. And I'll say it again, like I, I said to him once, well, I wrote to him and I said in a video, I'm like, if you want to lie to be famous, you know what? That's your prerogative, do it. But when you're suing people based on the lie, when you're stealing people's scores and throwing them under the bus when they confront you, that that's crossing a line. That's, that's nasty. I mean, people lie all the time to look grander. But you're literally suing people to shut them up from saying the truth. Yeah. And that that's that's just despicable. This this is terrible. We're not talking ten thousand, we're talking million dollars because it gets press. It's it's always for press. And it's it's just terrible. He's already famous. Yeah, I told him, you're already famous. You're already famous. You will always be the well the most known classic arcade gamer. Just fess up. People will uh, will forgive you in a year or two because that's how people are, and that's it. But that's my stance. But I uh, thank you for the time and stuff. Yeah, but, thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks, Carlos. All right, right David. We'll see you, Steve. We'll yep, talk soon. Everyone. We'll talk soon. All right, take care, man. All right. And then, Walter, I only have about probably 10 more minutes, so. All right, yeah, yeah, it's probably a good uh, time to start uh, wrapping up and stuff. Um, David, uh, did you want to talk about uh, how you've been treated since you started being more critical of uh, Billy's position? Well, um, a lot of it has to do with not, not really that much critical. I mean, I've seen some things recently, you know, where I, I let's say, for instance, I posted something on Facebook which says, where I made the uh, the claim that there is evidence. Billy Mitchell basically told me that if uh, Carlos, for instance, uh, uh, didn't really get on board or sign with it, basically, then that uh, that he would be part of like legal action, you know. And I said I have evidence to prove that, or documentation to prove it. And someone called into question and said, "Well, what what is that evidence?" And basically, someone just calling me out as a liar. And then it ended up being that I blocked this person or they, you know, or eventually uh, they were unfriended or whatever. And then I remember getting something in the mail shortly thereafter from uh, a company uh, called DBM, which I looked up and it, it was Dick's by mail. <laughs> Someone was sending me something from a company, Dick's by mail. And uh, you know what? You know, I guess if someone has an account with that kind of stuff, I mean, it doesn't talk about my character. It talks about theirs. So, uh, I mean, I've seen screenshots where people are calling me derogatory names, like uh, calling me a cunt and all this other kind of crap, and they're they're blasting me. You know what? It's laughable. I mean, it's it's child's play, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to act like a child, go for it. I mean, I mean, I could have responded in kind and, and posted a bunch of nonsense or, like, sent mail or send some crap to them, but what am I going to be just like them? It's so stupid. It's funny. And then I'll get stuff like uh, Billy Mitchell will use code words on his uh, Twitch stream. And you know what? Uh, people say, oh, yeah, you, you spend too much time looking at Billy Mitchell. I said, no. The ones that are wasting their time with Billy Mitchell are the ones that spend all hours of the night watching his Twitch streams. Yeah. I mean, I'll admit, I'll look at some of his Twitch streams, let's say, for instance, either in the beginning or at the end of it, because that's where he usually starts talking. He never he never stops talking about stuff. He'll make false claims to all the people who will just eat all his words up. Uh, not a shred, shred of evidence, by the way. And then he'll start talking bad, or he'll, he'll play like things like uh, use code words. Like, like recently he used a code word about, I believe he was referring to me, let's put it that way. And he'll start bad-mouthing me or something like that uh, using a code word because he's a coward. Did you hear that, Billy? You're a coward. You want to you want to talk to my face? Come talk to my face. All right, you're the one that says nobody will ever come to you, and they always talk behind their keyboard. Well, guess who's talking behind their keyboard, Billy? You want? I mean, you can put this out there. You know what? 
Uh, he claims to be the best uh, at whatever he does. He is a subpar Pac-Man player. And uh, on this recent Ant Stream uh, challenge, he came in fifth. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I was having problems with the, the Ant Stream, for instance, let's say, uh, because uh, I believe that the uh, there's a significant lag. Uh, there's the input uh, responsiveness, which is an issue. And then uh, people are trying to claim Billy and whoever was with him during one of his streams were like, uh, dogging me using a false name uh, about me complaining and whining and stuff, and belly aching about you know uh, uh, not being able to play or something like that. Well, you know what? I'm getting this off my chest now. Let's put it that way. Whether this should be edited or not is 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 a uh, another issue. Uh, but it ends up where uh, he placed fifth in that Anstream tournament, and I placed third. So when it comes to that. I didn't post you know, what my screen name was. My screen name was Course Play, for instance. Uh, I used a Bluetooth keyboard uh, connected to my cell phone. So yeah, I had trouble with the internet. I don't have the greatest internet in the world, but I still came in third place and I still kicked Billy Mitchell's ass. So there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, if he's gonna talk, then let him, if he's oh. gonna talk, talk to my face. Don't talk you know, on your little Twitch stream, Billy. Using code names and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a coward. And his son's a coward, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there, is one other, there is one other point of contention, actually, in that when you were asking the timeline after the verdict, and that was an article by Josh Harmon from EGM where he contacted me proactively to interview me about my account of the whole situation mm. and uh shortly after i had you know had you know back and forth with josh Harmon giving my account of everything all of a sudden neil hernandez speaking of this guy that's a recent over the last year and a half ally of bill you know speaking of the twitch streams you'll hear bill talking to him a lot on his streams or what have you this guy used to be a good friend of mine he worked with me for my car service uh, we talked every day. Uh, you know, we were very good friends at one point, me and Neil Hernandez. And, uh, you know, he started getting closer to Bill, and he started getting further away from me as a result of that without really going into so many details. But he proactively contacted Josh Harmon, the editor of EGM, and made all these false claims and flat-out lies about me to, in, in, in some crazy attempt to think that Josh Harmon would discredit or remove my account because they were trying to paint me as some unstable person. So I can't help to think that Bill put Neil up to this because Neil had a voicemail that of me talking of me calling Bill. But how could Neil have that? And then Neil also had he illegally recorded me in the state of Florida. You cannot record somebody without their knowledge and permission. And then, you know, keep it for a period of time and then send it to somebody else unbeknownst to me, basically trying to, in this case, paint me as like, because I was raising my voice and I was kind of angry apparently in this recording. But what's funny is typically, I guess historically, maybe people want to record other people without them knowing it to catch them in a lie. But in this case, I'm not lying about anything. He's just recording me and then trying to manipulate it later on to be like, you see, this guy's, his voice, he's raising his voice, he's crazy. Clearly, he's an unstable person. It was more in that manner than actually trying to catch somebody in a lie, per se. But, but in any case, I didn't even know anything about this until Josh Harmon contacted me. And he was like, this guy named Neil Hernandez contacts me out of the blue. I didn't ask for this guy or to talk to him, saying that he has all this information about you and how, and then he just went into all these flat out lies. One was that I was a spy for Jace Hall <laughs> during the whole dispute process, which was just hilarious. Like I would talk to Jace Hall every day and report to him like what was going on. According and, to Neil. According to Neil, yeah, that's what he told Josh Harmon. And I told Josh Harmon, you know what? I will give you my phone records during that period of time. And I will show you the amount of times I actually talked to Jace, which was like three or four tops in the whole six weeks. And one of the times I talked with him, ironically, Bill was standing right there. I had Jace Hall on a speakerphone. 
And I was still defending Bill at that point, trying to buy him and Carlos more time to conduct more tests on behalf of Bill with Jace Hall on a speakerphone with Bill standing right in front of me at Arcade Game Sales while I'm talking to Jace on the speakerphone. That was one of the exchanges I had with Jace. Still completely at that point in defense of Bill on my, on, as far as I went. So the fact that Neil would go to Josh Harmon unsolicited and start just, he said stuff that was so like off the, like I had a stroke when I was a kid and I paid him unfairly when he worked with me, which was absolutely just laughable. And just stuff that had nothing, long story short, nothing to pertain to the situation. It's just personal attacks. And uh, when Neil, when I found out that he had a recording of a, of a phone conversation between me and him without my knowledge or permission, that is against the law in the state of Florida. So if I wanted to, I could have went the extra step and really tried to make it interesting by uh, reporting this or filing a report on this. But then, you know, I was thinking, is it really worth it? People are going to think I'm probably shallow for doing such a thing. You know, it's, it's whatever. Obviously, it didn't have its intended effect because Josh Harmon also posted about this in that EGM article. You can go back and read it right now. It's archived, egmnow.com. I think it's called Split Screen Man is the name of yep. the article. And yep. um, amazingly, I almost forgot that uh, Josh Harmon actually points all this out. You, for anybody that you know doesn't want to take my word for it, go ahead and read the article. You can look it up. And Josh Harmon is the one that revealed all this to me. And when I, when I heard this from Josh, I was like, this is incredible. This guy was my friend. He completely lied about me. And I didn't even know he was doing this. And the only reason I knew is because Josh Harmon told me he was trying to do this. And Josh Harmon was like, well, I would never be able to use these recordings anyway, because it's illegal in the state of Florida. So why would I try to use them? And he was like, and he listened to him and he actually said, I mean, you're not, everything you're saying matches up with everything you're telling me. It's just, he's kind of pushing buttons and you're, you're getting angry on the recording. And this was after, you know, this was post verdict. So yeah. anyway, now that I think about it, that was the other situation where, you know, another, it's, it's another one of those, not Bill directly, but somebody kind of on behalf of Bill that's kind of tasking, going to task for him. Because uh, he also didn't have Josh Harmon's contact info, I don't believe. Yeah, J Josh Harmon told me he met him briefly once when Neil was with Bill in Banning, California. There was not Arcade Expo, but there was another event that Josh Harmon showed up to because mm -hmm. he was going to interview Bill. Remember, he interviewed Bill a lot for this article. Yeah. And I think he said in passing, he, Neil was with Bill at that event and he met him once briefly, but didn't know who he was, you know, in essence, from a hole in the ground. And then when Neil proactively contacted him, yeah, he told me, I don't know why this guy's contacting me. I didn't ask to speak with him. You know, he's just obviously, clearly he's doing this on behalf of Bill to trying to discredit you and paint a picture like you're some unstable person and I should strike your account from the story based on all the things that he, that he said about me that were flat out lies. So, you know, so that kind of lost me for good with Neil Hernandez as far as I went because I'm like, well, he's capable <laughs> of doing that you know, get out of here. You know, that's like beyond reproach. That's like despicable to me. So I would point out that, I mean, just to be clear is that the reason why the, uh, the recordings were illegal is because both of you are in the state of Florida yeah, and the right. state of Florida, their recording laws have to do with both or all parties have to give consent for recording. Federal law re requires a one party consent and most other states is a one party consent as well. So exactly. just to clear that up. Florida is a rare state. I think California is another one where it has to be two-party consent. Yeah, yeah. Washington's the same other states way. where, it, two like here. David said, where, what's that? Washington's the same way. It has to be two parties here. Okay, yeah. Well, the, the one thing I did find out with Washington was that Washington is, a, is an all-party, but if you tell somebody that you're recording, whether they consent or not, that will serve as, you know, uh, proof. Um, if you tell someone you're recording the conversation, whether they agree with it or not, you're still allowed to record it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, Let's if see. they don't want to be recorded, they can always just hang up. Hang up. Yeah. <laughs> but it wants you well, notify in, them. In this that, situation, that serves as consent. In this situation, Neil, Neil had recorded this and he, he had it for like 10 months before he decided to send it. 
to the editor of this article just out of the blue. So it was very, very you know, shady, um, mm -hmm. to say the least, to do something like that to someone where I never did anything to that guy except be a friend and you know, try to help him with work. And, you know, it's, it's just unbelievable. I don't get it how there's certain people, even now, a few people that are so loyal to Bill. And it's like, I know they're smart enough to understand what the facts and the truth is of the situation. I don't get it. You know, is it like, are, is, they must think they're getting something out of it. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. It's a disconnect. They're, they're going to be, they think where, they're going to be in the next movie, maybe? Maybe it's something like that. I don't know. I have no idea. It's baffling to me how, yeah, there's a few people that are still kind of, you know, I don't know if it's the fanboy, fangirl type thing, or if it's they were promised something, or they're going to be a part of something, or they're going to they're going to make their own reputation as a result of it. I have no idea. <clears throat> Mind-boggling to me at this point. Yeah. But yeah. Car what Carlos said earlier, like I don't, you know, I guess I've never actually met a true con artist, in essence. And now I'm, you know, I'm realizing and experiencing over these past couple of years, like, oh, this is the essence of what that term is. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I went in, I mean, I came at this as kind of a rando from the internet, just kind of researching out of curiosity. And at first I thought, oh, you know, I thought, oh, he, he's a legit player, but probably succumb to the temptation. That's something that happens with cheaters sometimes. They, they come up against the wall and they succumb to the temptation. And it was only after really researching, really digging behind the scenes, I was just like, oh, wow, this guy's a complete asshole. <laughs> Well, you know, you have a situation like with the Lance Armstrong where, but in his case, he actually was a great athlete and a great cyclist. Probably didn't need to do what he did to get an edge or so to speak. But to David's point, that's that's even different from Bill because Bill is a good gamer, you know, he's, he, but not, I don't, to David's point, definitely not the best or great. And he's using this, you know, these smoke and mirrors, you know, and, and, and this uh, kind of a, history, if you will, to uh, to vault him to a status that he's really not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's probably time to start wrapping this up. Did either of you have any uh, kind of final thoughts you want to put on the record for this? Start with I'll you, just David. say, um, you know, we're going to see what happens with everything. There's back and forth as far as uh, any slap and, and uh, undertaking motions and uh, uh, I know myself and I'm sure and I and David as well, we signed declarations. So if it ever does get to a situation where it goes to court, yes, we will have we will be able to testify and you know we'll be able to once again share what I've been saying when asked or or when sharing for the last two and a half years of the account of this whole situation. And uh, yeah, hopefully justice will be served eventually. Uh, you know, it's a process, it takes time. And uh, you know, but hopefully uh, you know the the the, uh, the truth will shine through and everybody will be able to move on from this and uh, you know continue to restore this community hopefully absolutely and you David uh well I guess I would just say that in in wrapping this up uh, you know obviously there's been the court case and the anti slap and motion for undertaking and as Steve said we both have uh, uh, made declarations uh, Billy Mitchell and his son took a particular, uh, I think, swipe at me, but he's also done it with Steven and, and Carlos and basically trying to deny there was any interaction, uh, that we really had anything to do on his behalf, even though there is, you know, uh, in the public record now, a voicemail where he said he appreciates everything I've done on his behalf. So, I mean, he uh, contradicts himself out of the gate. Uh, yes, we, were, we weren't just doing this out of, you know, out of the blue just for our, for our own good you know good time you know this was done definitely to defend billy which we all at the all at the time believed that he was innocent and we were trying to to show that he was innocent views change uh they took a swipe at me and some of the recent declarations calling me a liar and things like that well the evidence points quite clearly to the very opposite billy mitchell is a liar i believe he's a compulsive liar and his son in his declaration trying to lie about me about a phone conversation we had and other things like that, as Carlos would say, is despicable. 
they're both liars and they're both cowards. And when it comes to Billy Mitchell, I initially believe that he didn't cheat, but I believe the, the evidence is uh, undeniable. He cheated, which means that he's a liar and a cheater. I guess that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good, folks. All right, man. I appreciate oh, well, it. Well, thanks, thanks for having us, Walter. And obviously, yeah. keep us in the loop on the, you know, the presentation or, you know, where we go from here on this segment. So. All right. Yeah, thank you both for coming on. Hopefully, to uh, vet all this and get this on YouTube pretty soon. All right. I appreciate it. Hey, all thanks right. a lot, man. Hey, thanks. Yeah.